Everybody, welcome. Got a little tutorial set up for you. I've got the hard surface toolbox too, and you don't have to have it for this tutorial, but it's going to help if you want to do some extra modeling. So I've got the carver tool built in, and a lot of people don't know about it. They don't want to use it. They want to use box cutter. They want to use uh, hard ups, things like that. And there are some advantages to using it. And so just to kind of throw it out there, I am working on a couple of scripts for this right now that should uh, put it in the ballpark of being used as a pretty, pretty good standard for hard surface modeling and making things easier. And it already does that with the toolet function to a pretty high degree. And then of course, if you're using the carver tool, now, something you may not know, go to Edit, Preferences, and type in Carver. Then drop down on the add-on. Make sure to check it on. It's free with Blender. This is a very good hard surface modeling add-on, okay? Come down here to Preferences, highlight this, Control-C, copy it. And you can do is you can drop in something like this twisted torus and you, i'm going to drop in let's see what else do i want there's some funky things in here like you could use the beam builder you could pretty much use anything so grab whatever object you want i'm going to grab a torus knot and just kind of play around with this thing kind of shift it into something like that it doesn't really matter any object you want and I'm going to move this off to the side just a touch. And what you want to do is you want to take what you just copied and go to the carver, to go to the uh, the knot, double click on any item, and then just press Control V and hit Enter. Now with that prefix on there, what that says is Carver, hey Carver, this is now Profile Brush, Twisted Taurus. And if you didn't know the carver tool which i'll just turn on with the um, hard surface toolbox it you can press b and it's going to give you all these different little profile brushes so if you press w uh, you go through some you can press d for depth and you can cut with spacebar <laughs> and you can cut some very nice profiles in all right and that's all fine and good so what you want to do is hit b and then we can hit X and you can see what we just named as a profile brush. I'll hit the space bar and now it's going to make all of those cuts according to that mesh. That's very abstract. That would be very difficult to come up with something like that. And so on top of that, I can actually add a bevel to that. And it's funny, I don't think I've got the bevel magic on here. I've got a free add on you guys can go get. So on my Gumroad, I'll put another link in the description so you guys can get it. Let's see, where is my Bevel Magic? There it is. Bevel Magic 2.0. All right, there it is. I'll go ahead and check that on. And then over here, it's going to put an intensity level of bevels, 1 through 5. This would be the lowest, and this would be the highest bevel you could probably get away with with an auto smooth. So what I'm going to do is I can go ahead and add the preset. And you'll see it changed the shading. Then you can just kind of step up the bevels. And obviously, if you get too high, it's not going to work. You can auto shade smooth, bring it down, bring down the intensity till you got something you like. And that'll harden normals and a bunch of other cool things as well. So with that being said, I'm going to drop in another cube. And I'll just scale this bad boy on the Y. Let's go to the tool blah, 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 item menu. I want to lock the scale on the Y and scale that up. So I've got something else to work with. All right. So this one I already named. So I'm going to invoke the carver tool actually for this one. B for profile brush, hit X and it looks like that's it. Now this was pretty cool because what it's actually going to do if you kind of pull it like that right about 
there. There we go. That's what I was looking for. And that creates a pretty cool damage. I'll just hit the auto shade smooth button. And that's nice. That's some nice looking damage right there. And you could duplicate that uh, cutter. Do a whole bunch of different things with it. So anyways, just want to show you guys this. I think it's a really, really cool option. Then I could throw a bevel on here with, say, an intensity of two. One, three, four. Can I get away with three? I think three looks pretty good. And for something like this, and I don't have it turned on on purpose, just so you can choose. Sharp arc cleans up everything else, and that's a nice looking bevel on there. I'll just go ahead and click apply. Yep. All right, so there you go. So you can do that with anything. And real quick, you could take the cube, scale it this way, that way, and the other. And I'll actually use the carver tool um, to kind of create another shape. And we, all right, so with that shape, all I want to do is pull up the carver tool, go to circle, hit W, come back to like, I don't know, six is fine. And I'll just make a little shape like this, hold down shift so I can re it, and I'll cut that shape out. Uh, so there's two different mesh, right? I could just delete the outside. And now this cool little dog right here, that's an actual cutter. And so I could come in here to this cube, double click and paste in the prefix. And then I can conceptually just copy that bring up the cutter, hit profile brush, actually. All right, there you go. And so that was just another bullion in there with the same exact shape. So you can see uh, what you're able to do with this is, is pretty nice. And then of course, you go to the hard surface toolbox and throw a bevel and a preset. Shade is smooth and you're done. All right, so another thing to note, and I've pulled out an asset library here. You can right click, mark that as an asset. You see little books next to it. Now all you have to do is save your blend file wherever you've got this. So if I go in to the desktop, I know that I've got one called asset packs. And so I just save the blend file in here and save as. And once I've done that, it will um, pop up. And if I just type in Carver, boom, there it is. And so now I can drag and drop that profile in uh, and use that actually to create other booleans. So I could shift D that, right click it, scale it on the Z, uh, shift right click, control minus, and you know, start making my own cutters. I could scale that up just a little bit and shift D. And you know, let me scale that thing in just a little bit and control, whoop, shift right click that and then control minus that one as well. Make some more cutters out of it. So anyways, you've got that and you modify it and throw in a bunch of brushes. And obviously if you have a uh, asset pack, you maybe have done this, but if not, you come into the edit preference menu, file paths under asset libraries. And all you have to do is click plus and you can double click on something that you have and it will now be in the asset pack folder. And so when you have the asset pack in that, uh, that workspace, then you'll be able to pull up everything and yep, yeah, there you go. So appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget Carver tool prefix. It's all free. Uh, you can get my Bevel Magic. I'll put a link in there for free. Uh, the Hard Surface Toolbox is a package that comes with this. So if you want the Hard Surface Toolbox as well, which has quite a few different options, I just put a tutorial up for it, then you can get that as well. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial lesson.